Well, I managed about 10 lap practice in this brand new car yesterday, but this is race day. I better practice a start. Now hold it, 7,000 revs. Oh! The Brands Hatch Rallycross course is half tarmac, half mud, and try to control 600 horsepower as you round paddock and dive down, tumble down hill through the chicane and back onto a racetrack that's smeared with mud is a delicate art. While I struggled to learn the knack of getting the best out of the Ford in the limited time available, Ford's rallycross superstar, Martin Shanker, tried to convince me that it was, at least, an easier proposition than the old rear-engined RS200. I think the car is, is, is more stable to drive. It is, it's got the engine in the front, so it's the sort of hammer, throw the hammer away, and the head will always be in front. So. They are a bit more uh, easy to drive. But when it came to his quarter-final, Shanker found life none too easy, as he was headed by European champion Kenneth Hansen's Citroen ZX and Britain's Barry Squibb in another escort. But Shanker is a man who will try anything to get past. <laughs> Even if it doesn't always work. While Squibb continued unperturbed to claim second spot, Hansen's only problem en route to victory was very limited visibility. But why was a Swede in a French car? <laughs> I, I was uh, four years in the Group A two-wheel drive championship with Ford, but uh, I didn't get any directly good support, so I went to Citroën, and uh, we had a very good support there, and uh, I'm uh, not regretting that because the car is working very well. My quarter-final put me up against Per Eklund Subaru and British favourite Will Gollop in his fast-starting Peugeot. But even the best make mistakes. Gollop went wide. Oh, Gollop's all over the place. I can't believe I'm following Will Gollop. Oh, now I can as they go away from me. As Teal Hansen belted me up the backside, Per Eklund belted the barrier and Gollop disappeared to victory, leaving me to escape the close attention of Hansen and finish a contented second. But despite winning, surely Will would prefer to be in his old Group B Metro. I'd rather be driving this Spurgo, because honestly, it handles better. It's, it's not got the low-down grunt that the, the Metro had, but it's, it's getting there. We've got a few more bits to do to it for next year. Well, it's a bit complicated, this rally cost. Although I finished second in my quarter-final, the fact that I was only 11th fastest overall in qualifying has meant I'm on sixth spot in this semi behind the guy I beat in the quarter. But uh, I reckon I'll beat him again. You'll see me in the final. <laughs> Transmission has broken and our fun is over. While I bid a sad farewell to the crowd after a disappointing day, the Group A finalists blasted off for a controversial final. Gollop leads, but Shanker pushes Jean Luc Poirier's Citroën sideways and his bonnet flies open in front of him. Michael Yernberg clouts Hansen and punctures a tyre. Well, ahead of all this drama, Gollop is getting away. But then Shanker has his throttle stick open. Per Eklund was the unlucky man in Shanker's path, and a split fuel tank caused the frightening fireball. But despite the damage, neither driver was injured, although Shanker was obviously shaken. On the rerun, Paye led, but then lost a wheel, leaving Gollop to streak off to victory, while the Frenchman counted to three. Un, deux, trois. And gave a resigned shrug. On then to the grand final and the Grand Prix itself, which Gollop lost by making an awful start, allowing Hansen to rocket into a lead he was never to lose. Barry Squibb gave chase, with Yernberg ahead of Gollop in third. 
While the European champion continued on his untroubled way, Gollop squeezed past Jernberg for third and set off after Squibb, but surely the gap was too large. Hansen duly took the chequered flag, but Gollop's charge just failed as Squibb crossed the line in second and then celebrated with a victory roll. Fortunately, the damage was confined to the car and Barry's pride, while the only man really celebrating was Sweden's Kenneth Hansen.